Today we're delivering a scoop on a G.I. Joe who shoots, but usually in a very different way. A guy based on a real character and with multiple differing story arcs in G.I. Joe. Today is all about Scoop. In 1989, a friend of reporter Mike Leonard's at Hasbro reached out to him in Chicago to say that they wanted to use his likeness for a new G.I. Joe figure intended to be a combat information specialist. Mike had to sign off and then approve for his likeness to be used for the mold. And this new figure based on Mike Leonard became Leonard Michaels, codenamed Scoop, not to be confused with the Scoop from Cybertron. So who is he? Well, true to the original, Scoop was born in Chicago, Illinois, and when he grew up, he went to college, earning an advanced degree in journalism and a master's degree in electrical engineering. Instead of going for an illustrious career in network news, Michaels opted to join the G.I. Joe team to catch news as it happened instead of reporting after the fact. Per his file card, it takes a special kind of guy to step out from behind cover during a firefight and keep his fingers squeezing the trigger of his video cam. Scoop follows in a long line of war correspondents, going back centuries with the modern version tracing all the way back to the 19th century's Crimean War and a guy named William Howard Russell, who covered the Charge of the Light Brigade, made famous by Tennyson's eponymous poem. He also covered the Siege of Sevastopol and the Thin Red Line during the Battle of Balaclava. There's also Floyd Gibbons, who was one of the only reporters allowed to the front by the U.S. during World War I, a method to control propaganda. There he embedded with the 5th Marines. There were also a ton of reporters during World War II, notably Pulitzer Prize winning journalist Ernie Pyle, who was everywhere from North Africa to Anzio to Normandy to Okinawa, where ultimately he lost his life. The Vietnam War offered unprecedented access to reporters, such as Joe Galloway, the only civilian awarded a Medal of Valor for action during the war. In a friendly fire incident, a canister of napalm exploded. A medic was shot in the head, and so Galloway had to get a soldier to the other medics during the Battle of Landing Zone X-Ray, a story that parallels Scoop's Valcards. Before that, Major Charlie Beckwith, who'd gone on to found Delta Force, put a Mike 1-6 in Galloway's hands, saying there's no room for non-combatants in this valley, and he'd have to use it to save himself and others during the upcoming Battle of Adrang. But before Scoop could follow a Galloway's footsteps, he needed some additional training. So he went for training to become a journalist, a 46R MOS, with a secondary as a microwave transmission specialist, which is a 25P MOS. This required 10 weeks of basic and AIT and a 26-week course on military communications foundations at Fort Gordon's Signal School, which is now the Cyber Center of Excellence that combines cyberspace ops, signals, and electronic warfare all under one roof. As an MTS, he learned about the Army's global information grid, ComSec, and how to use, maintain, and troubleshoot various microwave radios, along with being a critical component of frameworks from C2 up to C6 ISR, even joint all-domain command and control that rolls in Space Force to the unified network. Also, how Scoop's comms would be incorporated in the U.S. Army Project Convergence campaign. He's one of the Joes that would really need constant training and continuing education with the ever forward-marching evolution of infrastructure and technology, like the change from analog to digital, and now the inclusion of artificial intelligence. He started with a big tape-fed, shoulder-held beta cam camcorder, and then would have to learn smaller units up to digital cameras and GoPros and even drone technology today. In 2017, Scoop's specialties were changed to public affairs broadcast specialist and combat documentation slash production. The scope of his work involves field reporting, hosting, and editing news programs for the Army Forces Radio and Television Service, and he's primarily responsible for creating news stories and operating electronic and film-based still video and audio acquisition equipment in order to document combat and non-combat operations. This gave him a 25 Victor MOS. This is where he learned about journalism, news, captions, voiceover, internal and external comms, and how to produce, capture, and edit in post. He learned about public affairs methods that align with DoD directives, along with photography fundamentals like lighting, optics, color theory, exposure, and how to use both real and digital cameras to capture still and motion imagery. The team was leery of this new guy at first, with him feeling put off by having a third wheel tagging along, lugging 60 pounds of video equipment and really not much firepower. What changed their mind was when Scoop carried a wounded Joe two clicks to a hairy evac site for medevac, all while his cameras were rolling and capturing the ordeal. And that was on his file card. In comic books, Scoop's first comic book appearance was not in the mainline G.I. Joe A Real American Hero comic book series, but it was in the Special Missions spin-off series. There, he debuted with issue 23, entitled simply Scoop. This was writer Larry Hama paired with Herb Trimpey on art. 
Stalker's team was on the deck of the USS Flag zeroing in their weapons when Wild Bill and a dragonfly landed to deliver Scoop to the Joes. Scoop was clumsy at first, grossly inexperienced in anything outside the barracks. So when he got out of the chopper, 27 copies of his transfer papers in hand, the rotor downwash blew them all over the deck. Stalker was apprehensive about bringing someone down range with them that they didn't know, never trained with, and didn't know if they could rely on to cover their six if things went sideways. Regardless, Duke told them, the new guy is going to go with you. DoD wanted documentation on all covert ops from that point forward. Essentially, these were things to use against them during subcommittee hearings up on Capitol Hill. Tunnel Rat didn't waste any time letting Scoop know that he was designated assistant gunner now, tasked with carrying Tunnel Rat's spare barrel and his extra ammo. Later on a tomahawk bound for the landing zone, Leatherneck told Scoop no one gives a crap if he's the outsider, just whether or not his lack of experience, clumsiness, stupidity, or even his body odor would get the rest of them killed. Hit and Run then told them even though his gear was SOP compliant, they still had to do buddy checks and gear checks. Checking the rounds in your mags before they jam up in a firefight is important, going so far as to protect Scoop's rifle sling from squeaking when it moves. Things a book wouldn't tell you, but real world experience will. Same with where to store certain items if he's KIA so they can recover it from his body easily. Bandages would require two of them, and the reasoning for that was there are entry and exit holes if he gets shot. Scoop said none of that was included in training. Stalker did say that he went through training, and that did prove that he could take it, but out in the field the question would remain, could he dish it out? Feet dry, just inland off the coast of Sierra Gordo, they prepped the repelling gear to fast rope to the ground. They were tasked with snatching the leader of the Sierra Gordo counter-revolutionaries named El Jefe, who'd been captured by Destro's Iron Grenadiers and now held hostage at a compound out in the jungle. The team kept Scoop in the center of their movement since they couldn't trust him on point, on drag, or flank security yet. When they did break for a rest, Scoop pulled out his camera, but it was whirring loud and the lens was reflecting light, so Stalker had to school him on noise discipline and how to mitigate reflections. Also told him to finish his canteen because the sloshing water was making noise. That night, as the team set up their ambush and firing positions, Scoop continued to roll the camera, capturing footage. Stalker then took Scoop and Tunnel Rat to set up claymores right along the trail. At one point, Scoop fell asleep and was startled awake by Tunnel Rat, who elbowed him in the helmet, yelling for a new belt to be fed into his weapon. Apparently, twice as many Iron Grenadiers showed up than expected, and most of them missed the Claymore kill zone. Tunnel Rat told him to get to the rally point, and that there'd be nothing to film but the inside of a body bag if he didn't move out quick. As a firefight in the darkened jungle broke out, Scoop filmed as much as he could, wondering if he'd be up for a Pulitzer Prize for this. Tunnel Rat needed more ammo in that replacement belt before he was hit and knocked out. A look of horror on Scoop's face. An Iron Grenadier attacked Scoop with a knife, but Scoop managed to use his camera to knock the guy out before he passed out himself. Scoop regained consciousness hours later on the Hilo after they were extracted. No film, total FUBAR situation, but Stalker still gave him a thumbs up. He proved himself to the team. Scoop was now a Joe. Scoop showed up in the main ARAH series with issue 92 where he was on a warthog disguised as a pineapple float in the Mr. Gordo parade. They blew their float cover to rescue Dinah and the other Joes before shooting their way through Voltar's forces to head for the border in Punta del Mucoso. It was Scoop's footage that they were able to show to El Presidente to let him know what was really happening. More recently, Scoop appeared in an untold tale story with issue 276. He was filming again in a tomahawk, but this time over northern Trucial Abysmium. Now he was with Stalker, Snake Eyes, Scarlet, and Torpedo. The insertion team dropped in and linked up with their guides, Amon and Zara, to guide them to their target, Hunzucker, who was at a nuclear plant. With Scoop still rolling, they all hopped in a hidden BTR to get to their target. And he continued rolling footage as they made entry via the sewer system to infiltrate the nuclear plant. Their guides wanted him to stop filming the bodies. She said it was evidence that could be used against them. Scarlet stepped in for him, saying that they had orders from the Puzzle Palace and the Brass to capture everything, and it would be up to them to trim the footage as needed. Scoop and the team witnessed their guide, Zara, sacrificing herself with a grenade to kill Hunzucker. Scoop also showed up toward the top left of the whole roster shot in America's Elite issue 25. In IDW Publishing's G.I. Joe Cobra issue 5 in 2010, Leonard Michaels was working as an investigative reporter, a skip tracer, and a PI at his own firm called Michaels and Sons, though he didn't actually have a son. Hawk hired him to investigate a cult called The Coil and their leader, Stephen Manazian, who, it would turn out, is Serpentor. The pay for this contract was $40,000, so Leonard took it with assurances that his PI license would remain intact. Scoop went to see a judge associated with Manazian's court cases before then going to Ojai, an enclave in Los Angeles, for the Coil cult. He also visited a detective named Hendel, but that was a cold lead. And then at the Coil Center, he found a secret area with a bloody altar. 
He was then captured and drugged by the coil who started to brainwash and indoctrinate Scoop. Serpentor later had Scoop write his story for him. And later as Venomous Maximus tells Scoop more history, he begins to start believing what he's being told. A Viper guard told Scoop his own story and that he would help him escape. So when Scoop escaped, he didn't have any success reaching back out to Hawk, so he went back to the coil, completely brainwashed now, and in issue 9 of that series, Scoop allowed himself happily to be sacrificed on an altar, crying out the Cobra Law battle cry as Serpentor bled him out with a knife. Voiced by Michael Benier, Scoop appeared quite a bit in the deep G.I. Joe animated series in the 90s with a big plot twist to come. His first showing in the series was Operation Dragonfire. He was with Slaughter's G.I. Joe team, the Slaughter's Marauders, in the Himalayas installing a power grid. He started off copying an attitude with the Joes as he shot footage for United News. And despite their altruistic efforts, Leonard's reporting was a hit piece, saying the Joes were interfering with locals at the expense of U.S. taxpayers. In fact, one of the very first things his animated self said was, Only my friends call me Scoop, foreshadowing what was to come. It just so happens that this is where the Dragonfire weapon was housed at a monastery, and so Baroness, Naga Hyde, and their Cobra army attacked. Not long after that, Scoop ended up in the driver's seat of a raider. When Slaughter's tank crashed into a building and the Sarge was trapped in the flaming rubble, Michaels ran in and saved him, and he did save him, but the tape in Scoop's camera was fried now. However, that brave act got him an invite to join the G.I. Joe team, and his new codename was Scoop. But something was up. At the monastery, Scoop dismissed himself and then secretly met with his old buddy from the Cobra Academy. Turns out that Leonard was a former top-ranking Crimson Guard captain who now infiltrated the G.I. Joe team successfully. Together, they reported details of the Dragonfire weapon back to Serpy, old Serpentor. It also turns out, though, that Cobra had lied to Scoop, saying G.I. Joe had destroyed his family and home, and so he joined up with Cobra, fanatically devoted and hellbent on getting revenge. Part 2 opens up with Scoop flying a Skystorm. Not sure when he learned how to do that, but there he was at the stick. He even rolled a Skystorm, so he was canopy to canopy with a Mudfighter. It was still bad, though, as he was relaying intel like classified flight data about the Mudfighter back to Destro. He then took some, well, rear shots of Lady J in the cave to an underground Cobra facility, meaning he was both a perv and a traitor. Stalker rode up on Scoop in a kayak and found him talking with his Cobra friend, but Stalker thought that Scoop was in trouble just as the cave flooded. Scoop went for the kayak while Stalker and Cobra fought in the water. This is when Scoop's mind started to change. He was thinking about Viper friend and wondering if he'd quit Cobra, would he still be an okay person? In part 3, Scoop and the team were in South America at the ruins of a lost city, relaying more intel to Cobra. He pretended to shoot during a firefight, but did save Mutt from Copperhead. During another transmission to Cobra, his Viper friend let him see the Cobra's central computer data file, but his recruitment data was listed as restricted. However, he did get access and he learned that Destro lied to him about his family and about G.I. Joe. Scoop led Sergeant Slaughter's team to where Cobra Commander Baroness and Nagahide were in the Lost City ruins. And later, as they went to escape, Lowlight questioned Scoop about how he knew so much about the ruins and where to go. He ended up calling Scoop a traitor, and Scoop admitted it was true to Sergeant Slaughter. So they slapped some handcuffs on him, and he was now the Joe's prisoner. And then, he and Lowlight were trapped when a tree fell on the metal bracelets connecting them. And he pleaded with Stalker, saying he was no longer a Cobra agent. That he was, but he wasn't now, and that was enough for Stalker to free him. Scoop ran back, though, and linked up with his Viper buddy just in time to see Cobra Commander using the Dragonfire for his new Pythonization procedure. Scoop later flew a Python Conquest in an air-to-air -air dogfight against Serpentor, and he won by forcing Serpentor to punch out. Later, Lowlight in a Night Viper uniform saw Scoop with Cobra Commander, thinking he was giving away vital intel to the enemy. What he really did, though, was give Destro false information for the next attack at the Mesa. Scoop then called Sergeant Slaughter to let them know Cobra would attack Joe Base Charlie Delta instead of the Mesa. So despite his rocky start, he managed to redeem himself by the end of Operation Dragonfire by relaying the frequency code for the Dragonfire weapon back to the Sarge. Even Lowlight came around in the end. In the Injustice and the Cobra Way episode, Scoop was at the battle at the National Archives building as part of the sewer team. His team was hit by friendly fire when Gridiron tossed a football grenade at the Archives steps despite his LOS being blurred by smoke. Scoop was there as Cobra Commander disguised as the Cape Crusader superhero Serpent Man made himself known to the world and at the President's G.I. Joe ceremony where President Mason ended up being kidnapped. Heavy Duty Gridiron and Scoop infiltrated the White House and the Oval Office where they discovered that the President was none other than Zarana in disguise. In Night of the Creepers, we see Scoop flying a locust and again later when the Mummy Army attacked. In I Found You Eevee, he was in a helicopter again, not flying this time, he was trying to get footage from the air above the desert. And later in that same episode, he broke his ankle and had to be stretchered out on a retaliator helicopter. 
And then finally, he helped attack the Comstock load submarine from a sailboat after her rudder was damaged by Skydive and his Sky Patrol Skyhawk. Scoop's first action figure was released in 1989. In 2017, the G.I. Joe Collectors Club figure subscription service released a second Scoop, whose loadout included his big old camera, an M4 carbine, a knife, an H&K P30L 9 mic mic sidearm, and a bright red repaint. In Brazil, for Estrella's Forza Electronica line, Scoop was called General Atac. That file card put him in more of a leadership position, where it says he was born to command, helmet on, intercom set, General Assault is ready for action. With extremely quick reasoning and a polar coldness when it comes to making decisions, he's the right man for the most impossible missions. And he organized football championships, exchanged old comic books for new ones, led field trips with the whole class, and with that spirit of leadership, he could only end up in the army. From there to the commandos, it was just a matter of time. And that, my friends, is the story of G.I. Joe's Scoop, which means that's a wrap on this one. I'm Jesse, this is J.L.S. Comics, and I'll see you soon.